What's up, everybody? And welcome to episode 18 of... Drumroll, please! Zach and EJ Talk Sports, the Shake Milton episode. Episode 18, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, EJ. How are you? Doing all right. I know we promised the fans that we'd be kind of kicking these out quicker, but you know what I realized? You can't rush perfection. Mm -hmm. So we are taking our time, but we do have a pretty exciting show to get through today. But I thought what would be awesome is before I left my place to come here to film this podcast, I was hammered with Amazon deliveries. Mm -hmm. A bunch of really? ordered a bunch of stuff on Amazon. So I figured we'd play a quick game of how well do you know your co-host when in here is a book mm -hmm. that has arrived for me today. Okay. What do you think this book is about? So here's a, just a few options. The easy answer would be music, but I don't think it is. Uh, it's definitely either a motivational book or it's like a workout book. I'm going to say it's a workout book with like exercises in it. Okay. Drum roll, please. The book is Living Low Carb. That was close. That was you close. were actually close. I was awesome. I'm kind of impressed. I think we're mind melting. Mm -hmm. But so let me tell you why I'm trying to live low carb these days. Do you know, or have you ever heard of a CGM? No. A CGM is and stands for Continuous Glucose Monitor. So mm -hmm. a, this thing is basically, so I, I've been wearing one, or I had been wearing one for like the last two months. Mm -hmm. You can get them. Basically, it's like a thumbtack ah. that you like launch into your arm. Oh, that doesn't sound fun. <laughs> no. It's actually, I hate needles, but it's actually surprisingly not as painful as you would think. And then you... Get the, you download an app, and the app is on your phone, and you can, at any moment in time, open up the app, and it tells you what your blood sugar level is. Because now all the health stuff that I'm reading right now, it all points Is to, it, like, constantly inside of you? Yeah. It's like a little sensor that's in ah. that thumbtack. That's like, Do you take it out now if you want or no? You, so the ones that I get last two weeks. So when I get them, they come in this case, and every two weeks, you got to just take it out. Okay. And then you put a new one in, but you got to keep flip-flopping arms. Mm -hmm. And then you open up your phone, and it'll say, like, hey, man, your blood sugar is at this mm -hmm. level. Right. So, like, all the stuff that I've been reading recently is, like, blood sugar. You're, if it's too high, that's what leads to your demise. Ah. <laughs> Every problem known to man now, apparently, is caused by problems with your blood sugar. So, so that's now, why you got the book. I was all about the book. So I'm like, let me get this glucose monitor and see what my blood sugar is doing, right? So I get this thing, and I'm, I'm a vegetarian, and right. I, you know, I, I, eat, I eat pretty decent, right? For sure. But my blood sugar is, so first of all, they said, oh, well, you know, if you're living right and you're like super good and solid and everything else, you should be between 70 and 90. That's like optimal. Like you are like thumbs up, okay. peak physical condition. So let me guess what you are. No. So you're, you're saying low, so I'm thinking you're high. I'm going to say you're like 150. 150? <laughs> That's a, it just chill and blood for sugar level, man. You got me almost with full-blown diabetes. <laughs> but you know what? It's not that bad because here's the problem. Like, if you're over, if you're around 100, that's like your doctors are like, hey, man, cool, you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. So you have these, like, the health fitness, like, community that's like, this is where you need to be. And then, like, there's, like, another little grade of, like, where your doctors look at it and say you're doing good. Oh, yeah. Right? So for me, like, they call it your fasting glucose level, meaning, like, what your glucose level is like if you're not eating. And it should be okay. low, definitely. Yeah, right. right. Okay. But I also must be a little stressed out. So for the most part, it was usually around, like, 90 Oh, that's good. Right? That's no, good. Right, 90, and then when I would eat, it would just go up. But then sometimes I'd go out to like the Cheesecake Factory or something like that, and then mm -hmm. it would just be like kind of jacked up or all out of whack for like four or five days. Wow. So our famous producer was saying, you know what I think the problem is? I think you're stressing yourself out. Mm -hmm. And the stress of constantly checking this glucose monitor is actually making your glucose continually go up. Because sometimes is glucose like stress related? It can be. And that's ah. the thing. You get bad sleep, your glucose can go up. All sorts of crazy stuff. Bad sleep, stress. You eat here's another thing. You think you're eating healthy, right? Like you put down this like I said to you, hey man, here's a nice bowl of like rice and vegetables. Mm -hmm. You're like, wow, EJ, you're living right. Guess what? For me, that rice is like a glucose bomb. I might as well be eating a thing of, like, Fruity Pebbles. So, exactly. So, I couldn't win. So, our producer, she's all like, hey, you're just stressing yourself out. This stuff is, is a bunch of baloney. 
So I'm like, you know what? Fine. So one day I got aggravated. I had a piece of pizza and it shot up. So I said, enough of this. I took the glucose monitor out. Oh, man. And I know. And I had an extra one. Just eh, It's not that big of a deal. It's literally like, it, it, I told you it's a thumbtack, but when you take yeah. it out, it's like peeling a sticker off your arm. Oh, okay. So no big deal. It's not like I ripped a needle off myself. That's good. Um, or an IV or something like that. So I go to our producer. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, why don't you walk the talk? Right? Because she's like, I basically always eat the same things as you. But now when I see our producer around the studio, she's chomping on Sour Patch Kids. She's chomping on cupcakes, crumble, everything. And I'm always like, I don't know how you can eat that stuff. If I ate that stuff and just glucose monitor my arm, it'd be over for me. I'd be mm-hmm. literally chasing it down with shots of insulin. And so she puts the glucose monitor in. Her birthday was last weekend. We go to the, um, by the way, if you've never gone here, you need to go. It's called the Brownstone. It's mm. Pancake House. Have you ever gone there? Never been You a there. pancake guy? I like pancakes, yeah. You gotta go there. Just don't wear a glucose monitor because it'll just it'll just completely ruin the experience. But I recommend highly going to this place called the Brownstone. Incredible. Okay. So we go there, right? And I'm I'm just I'm ready. I'm like ready to pounce, being like, I can't wait. Eat those pancakes. Eat that toast. Yeah, that's right. A little extra whipped cream. Because when you go to open your phone and check that glucose monitor, you're gonna be stepping into my world. She opens it. What do you think? 80. Perfect blood glucose. This woman is impervious to any food that hits her system. Every day now. Now I'm back, I'm like infatuated with texting her. I'll, like, I'll be texting her all the time. I might, you take a break during the podcast and text her. What's your blood glucose level? She stays the same. So I realize now that maybe I got to figure out how to go even lower carb. Mm-hmm. Hence that book. But I, I apologize. And I apologize to all you out there. Anybody that wears a CGM out there, feel free to let us know how you're making out. Hopefully better than me. Or if you found that there's any super sneaky treats that explode your blood sugar. Sushi for me, dog. Mm. I'm out on sushi. You don't like sushi? I love sushi. But oh. I can't eat it because it oh. spikes my blood sugar. Yeah, there's a lot of things That's that brutal. I... It is. It's really tough. I feel bad. I, gotta, I, gotta, I know. I'm, I'm just got me rethinking so many things. But anyway, let's get to the NFL. Something I'm not rethinking. My Dolphins... Playing the Chiefs right now. That is the game of the week, Mm -hmm. right? Germany. In Germany. For some reason. My nationality as well. So it's kind of all things coming up, EJ, on that, except I don't know if I would have, if I'm super psyched that this game of high importance is is being played at 9 a.m. in Germany. Mm -hmm. But Which, for what reason, is it in Germany? I couldn't tell you. Uh, Money, baby. I guess so. (laughs) I mean, I understand the England ones because they might add an expansion team in England in some time in the near future. Uh, but I don't see any scenario where Germany like ever really gets added. So it doesn't really make that much sense to me, but yeah, yeah. it is what it is. So here's the thing that like hit me this week. I did not realize that the Chiefs have essentially moved already into NFL royalty because the amount of haters and, and apologists and everything else that have come out now for the Chiefs going up against the Dolphins, it actually kind of caught me off guard. So this this week's and the end of last week's, like, like media, where, you know, everybody's like, well, look, if the Dolphins go and blow the Chiefs out, no big deal. They're the Chiefs. The Chiefs are going to be great. Chiefs are going to be there. What have the Dolphins done? Dolphins are 13-33 and 33 against, you know, this year with against, you know, their opponents, you know, teams that they've beaten, which, look, I understand. I'm a Dolphin fan. I am tough on my team. Mm-hmm. I'm still not completely on board with Tua. But yep. I like the direction the team's going. Um, I don't. I, I don't follow a lot of my my Dolphin friends who basically said that you know we were robbed against the Eagles with mm-hmm. the refs and, and everything else. I mean, there were some tough calls, but look, at the end of the day, there was still a lot of make you know a lot of a lot of makeable plays left on the field from Miami side. Right. But I want to get your take first of all on this game. Is it a game that you do see a lot of significance? For the Chiefs in, like the Chiefs coming off this loss, playing the team that, you know, is supposed to be the team now that can actually stand toe-to-toe with them firepower-wise, has their former, you know, wide receiver Tyreek Hill, or are you kind of on the side of, you know what, like Kansas City can go into this game, get blown out by 40, but it's not going to matter because, you, you know, whoever it is is going to be playing an hour ahead in mm-hmm. January to, to, you know, for, to, uh, for a chance to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. So, where are you on the Chiefs? Are the Chiefs NFL royalty right now? And is this game um, of equal importance to both teams? Or do you think it's more of a prove-it game for Miami? What I will say, it's a very interesting game because the Chiefs just got their second loss of the season. It's like, whatever, they're 6-2. and two. That's a great record. Except they lost to the Broncos. Not only are the Broncos bad, they are bad. They're now playing the team that beat the Broncos by 50. 
The Dolphins scored 70 on the team that just beat the Chiefs. They just held the Chiefs to zero touchdowns. With that being said, I think the Chiefs are going to be fine. I don't think there's anyone in the NFL who says, I want the Chiefs in the playoffs. I think they'd rather have anyone else, at least in the AFC. But also, I think the Dolphins will be fine. If the Dolphins lose this game, I don't think it's like, oh, they're not legit. Mm -hmm. If they get blown out, it maybe it's like, okay, maybe they aren't at the level of the Chiefs. But I think it's either going to be a close game or the Dolphins are going to win. I don't see the Dolphins getting blown out. And with that being said, I mean, the Chiefs are, as you said, NFL royalty. They've won two championships in the last four years or whatever it is. And uh, they have an elite offense. Uh, and they have their defense has stepped up a decent amount this year. And I, I like where, obviously, they're going. But I think the Dolphins really do have a chance this weekend to really prove who they are. Okay. How important, really, is home field in the NFL playoffs? Like, does it is it one of these things that really only matters to a handful of teams that really have this insane potential for a weather advantage? Like... If you are Miami, who has to travel to Buffalo mm -hmm. to play, but I mean, Kansas City went to Buffalo. Uh, excuse me, um, you know, Cincinnati went to Buffalo and beat mm -hmm. them in the snow. Yeah. Like, if you're Buffalo and you're traveling to Kansas City and you're playing it, I mean, is that? I mean, is Kansas City cold different from Buffalo cold? I I don't know. I'm actually want your opinion, but I mean, really, is home field advantage more of a situational thing when you might be looking at something completely skewed where you're taking a dome team and putting them on a slow, muddy track in Pittsburgh, or you're taking a warm weather team like Miami and making them, you know, put on all their Under Armour and, and play, you know, in, in two feet of snow from Buffalo. But if you have two dome teams playing each other in one each other mm. in, in one another's dome, or if you have warm weather teams playing each other in the warm weather, or if you have cold weather teams playing each other in cold weather, is home field of the same significance? So home field advantage obviously can be a very large factor because of fans, weather, dome, many things. Weather wise though, I feel like it's not that big of a difference because while well, maybe one team's used to the cold, one team's not. But they're both playing in the cold. So it's really, I find that not to be much of a uh, disadvantage for the team that's away. Also, commenting on the cold in Kansas City or Buffalo, I've never been to either, so I can't com uh, confirm which cold is worse. But, uh, so weather, I don't think, plays that large of a factor when it comes to home field advantage. At least because once you get to the playoffs, you have a lot of uh, players who are either elite or veterans, they know what they're doing, and I doubt that they're going to let the weather really change what they do that much. Question for you and, and question for our viewers as well. Feel free to, to comment. All sports, greatest home field court ice advantage, in your mm. opinion. Can you think of one team that you feel in a one-on-one -on -one situation, they have the greatest home home field advantage? What I will say, and I don't, I'm not or talking about the advantage. advantage if we if we jump to anything. I've, not an I've been to a few of these stadiums, and the best home crowd who can really impact a game, the Philly fans, uh, the Phillies, the Eagles, uh, their college teams, the Sixers. It's just, it's very loud. I went to a Sixers game once as a Celtics fan. I was rooting for the Celtics. They were playing the Sixers. Uh, the Celtics are losing. The whole crowd's chanting Boston sucks and many other things. And then some people are po turning around and like directing it at us. It's really the whole, the whole crowd was doing it. It was really, it was just, it was impressive how much all the fans were into the game. Right. And similar like in the MLB playoffs, the whole crowd in Philly uh, sang, I think it was Bryson Stott's walk-up song. He hits, he hits a bomb. It was electric. And it's like, their crowd is huge. Home field advantage-wise, you're looking at, I'd say, I'm going to still say Philly, just because I have experience with that. Did you see, um, I believe it was HBO. I apologize if it's Showtime. Did you see or watch the um, the series uh, Showtime? About the I Lakers? did not. It was interesting because I felt it was just as much about the rise of, of uh, Larry Bird mm -hmm. and his legend. But um, in the, the second season, in the finale, it was fascinating how they kind of talked about some of the things. And I'm not, you know, I guess we'd have to dig into how much was, you know, fabricated for entertainment purposes and how much is legit. But, like, what they would do in Boston about, like, shutting the air conditioning off so that mm -hmm. the whole place was, like, you know, super, super, super hot, and the fans are hostile. So, like, you wonder 
if it's really, especially if, if you're a team and, a, and playing a sport where you're playing outdoors, what provides the greater advantage when you talk about home field? Is it weather or is it actually the level of hostility the environment, you know, provide, uh, you know, uh, demonstrates towards the, op the opposing team? Because you figure if you have more sensitive players um, or, or people that are more, you know, or players that are more prone to hearing, you know, and, and, and keeping their ears open, you know, maybe those are, it's, it's easier to get under their skin, you know, mm -hmm. when you have, when you have uh, a fan base that, 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 like Philly, that kind of seems to, um, you know, excel at that. It's got to be the hostility. I mean, when you look at it, let's just, I'm going to give a few NBA examples, because that's where I spend the most time watching and analyzing this stuff. Uh, like when Ben Simmons went back to Philly, whole crowd's chanting, F Ben Simmons, and he folded under the pressure. He didn't play very well. Uh, he's still, he's working his way back up. He's still not the same player. But specifically in that instant, that got under skin. Similar, Kyrie Irving went to ba back to Boston. Not the, even the first time. I don't remember what he did the first time. But in the playoffs, two years ago when we played the Nets, we swept them. We were just getting under his skin. He flipped off the crowd multiple times. And when the players start interacting with the crowd, you know you're really, you're getting to them and you got to keep going. And obviously the Celtics ended up sweeping the Nets. Uh, so I think a hostile crowd can really, uh, for some players who aren't as mentally locked in as others, like LeBron. LeBron is always getting yelled at. LeBron is always, usually, he's, uh, he's focused on the game. He doesn't let it get to him. And some players will fold under that. And you actually wonder, when you talk about some of the greats, like the first thing that comes to mind when you mentioned LeBron, I was thinking Reggie Miller with Spike Lee, is, you know, can that environment, when it's too hostile or, you know, you make it too personal and you're dealing with, you know, players that are locked in or all-time greats, can actually that advantage work against you? Because now you might, are you supplying extra motivation to those players who are, you know, that kind of great white, mm -hmm. you know, shark when, you know, when, when it's crunch time. And, you know, if you're there and you're just taunting Steph Curry the whole time, mm -hmm. you know, are you actually helping or hurting the situation where, you know, if he was just kind of, you know, playing and, and, and not being given that extra, you know, motivation or extra something to kind of, you know, spark him? It's, uh, it really depends what type of player you have. It can fuel some players to really just, like, prove them wrong, make them crumble, uh, like, for the Knicks. Trey Young was playing good. They were like, we want to beat Trey Young. So they were having a really good year. Uh, they put out like a sheet to all the fans on their way into the arena. They said, today's chant is Trey Young is balding. And they attached a picture, picture of a lollipop, a lollipop sorry, that fell on a carpet or something, which had a bunch of hair on it oh. because it fell on the carpet. <laughs> and they were implying that, that was Trey Young. Oh, and then Trey Young obviously uh, closed out that series took a bow to the crowd. They right. were very happy. I'm sure if we <laughs> ask some fans, they're still very uh, mad about that to this day. Right. Uh, like you said, it depends what type of player you have. Like some players, which I mentioned, fold under that, and some elite players who have a mentality where they want to prove these fans wrong. They were saying, they're saying this about me. Well, I'm just going to beat them. Like Trey Young to the Knicks. The Knicks really wanted to win that series. They put out a thing to their fans. They said, the chant for today's game. I don't know if this was officially the Knicks, but the Knicks, this was going around to all the Knicks fans. The chant for today's game is Trey Young is balding. And they attached a picture of a lollipop that fell on a carpet and picked up some hair. And they were, it, it was supposed to be Trey like, Young. Lost any hair yeah. cuts. <laughs> they were implying that Trey Young looks right. like that. And Trey Young obviously closed out that series, took a bow to the crowd. And uh, Knicks fans will probably hate him for as long as he plays now. <laughs> uh, so for certain players that really just puts them into another gear, like, okay, I'm going to lock in now. Right. You talk about pressure, pressure players and everything. It, it kind of reminds me of a statistic, you know, you and I were talking off air about uh, Will Levis. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was debating this week whether or not to pick him up in fantasy football. Mm -hmm. And I heard this statistic that last week, even, you know, he threw the, the four touchdowns that he only had like a 22% uh, completion percentage when he was actually under pressure. Mm -hmm. and it got me thinking about statistics and the importance of statistics in sports. And, you know, there's a lot of good ones like that one. I was like, okay, maybe that means something. Steelers might get some pressure on him. Um, but useless statistics. Mm -hmm. And I am going to tell you right now, and I want to hear yours, what I consider to be the most useless statistic that I consistently hear when teams are, you know, leading up to a big matchup. Their all-time record against one another. Mm -hmm. 
so and so is eleven and one against this team all time mm-hmm. over the last three seasons, eleven and one. Why do I care unless it is the same exact players playing at the same exact skill level, playing in the same exact system mm-hmm. under the same exact conditions? Because if the uh, Dolphins are twelve and zero all time against the Jets. You know, and you and I and, you know, nine of our friends decide to lace it up and put on Dolphins gear. (laughs) Is anybody out there feeling like we're going to keep that streak going? So, like, what does it matter? Like, what what is an all time that or how they are against the spread? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, or on Thursday night football, they're four and one or so and so. Like, they're not looking at the spread. They're not like, oh, right. That we really want hey, to cover. Yeah. Hey, we lost tonight, but high five everybody <laughs> because you know we, we still keep our streak against against the spread going. But that 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 is my rant when I see all these statistics because now with you know, and and pardon me, you know, being a musician with AI now, and I had somebody show me their day. They asked me if I heard the you know version of Frank Sinatra singing Dua Lipa that was AI generated. So so now I'm only assuming that we will have more and more insane statistics and analysis with, you know, more and more advancement of AI. So how about you, my friend? What is one of the most useless sports statistics that you can think of? So I'm going to go right to the NBA. So as a Celtics fan, uh, Jason Tatum's obviously our best player. Big thing for him that I've been wanting to see is I want to be more efficient because there's times he has a lot of games where he goes 2 for 13, Three for fifteen. And it's just and he gets free throws and he rebounds and assists. So he still has a good game. But you just want to be more efficient shooting the ball. And but then someone will tell me, but his true shooting percentage. I'm like, I don't care. Uh, I'm not an expert on true shooting percentage, but I'm pretty sure it's like the expected uh <laughs> shooting percentage based on the shot they take. I'm like, it doesn't matter what your true shooting percentage is, what is your shooting percentage? Because like, oh his true shooting percentage is sixty percent. But he shoots 30% from there. So he shoots 30%. It doesn't matter that his true shooting percent is 60. I just find it's a way to, like, uh, it's like an efficiency stat that's not, like, actual efficiency. I'm, let's look up how they calculate this. Because I, I didn't do my research here. How is true shooting? It is, it's percentage adjusted for three-pointers and free throws. It measures a player's efficiency at shooting the ball. Half the points scored divided by the sum of the field goals attempted and point and point seven point four seven five times the free throws attempted. <laughs> How who came up with this? Right. Point four seven five th- just I'm cool with field goal percentage, three point percentage, free throw percentage. You can put them together in your brain and say this person is more efficient than this person. We don't need true shooting percentage. Like, let's look. What is it? Russell Westbrook's true shooting percentage? He shoots 52.7 true shooting percentage. Uh, and now, Russell Westbrook, let's just look up his normal shooting percentage. 43. So you're saying his true shooting percentage is 9 more than his shooting? So, like, if you look at true shooting percentage, oh, Russell Westbrook's more efficient than he is. And I'm not calling Russ inefficient, which he's not the most efficient player of all time. But it's like, it just doesn't make sense why we need to add this extra layer of are you efficient or if you're inefficient. Also, you can just cut all this out and watch the games. You can watch a game and say, oh, this player's efficient or this player keeps shooting. Right. And not making it. So, <clears throat> speaking of this, you and, I were, you and I were talking off air and I, it, it prompted me um, to remember this conversation that I used to, I used to have with, with my brother, or actually probably comes up every Sunday when I'm, when I'm either yelling at TV with, you know, watching sports. Um, and I want, I want your opinion on this and I'm going to give you three scenarios and you can either rank them in the likelihood of which one you think will happen, or you can just feel free to comment on, on all three of them. And, uh, absolutely. We are open to our comments from all of our, our fans out there. I will preface it with this. <clears throat> I was a college athlete, so I played baseball up through college. Um, I was a quarterback up through high school, chose to play baseball in college, not football. Um, probably if I played football in college, I may have moved to uh, receiver. Um, 
basketball was a point guard up till I uh, tore my ACL. So I got some, I got, I got a, a decent sports pedigree. Right. I can handle mm-hmm. myself. Okay. So I propose this question to you. I am over 40 years old. Um, I would be uh, the most likely um, in one of the oldest players in any of the major leagues, meaning baseball, basketball, mm-hmm. or football, playing today. Easily, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pretty easily. Okay. If I was to take one full year off and do the Michael Jordan, so for each sport, so this is the global thing right now, I take one full year off and I train with the elite trainers for that sport, both for physical capabilities to put my body in the best position and for technique and everything that that you would need. So one full year, Mm -hmm. it is my full-time job to try and just master my body in terms of health, nutrition, and learning this sport. Now, I play one full season in each Mm -hmm. sport. Cannot be benched. The mm-hmm. only thing that takes me out is death. Meaning, <laughs> as five nine and and an NFL quarterback, I could die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, if you know somebody like uh, you know, Dar- you know Darnold hits me or something like that. Sam um, Sam Darnold. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. If, if he hits me, why would I, he be hitting you? <laughs> well, true. Um, anyway, my point is this: <clears throat> one full season in the NFL at quarterback, mm-hmm. could I throw? For a thousand yards and ten touchdowns, NBA through the course of an entire NBA season, could I score fifty points and have a hundred assists? Major League Baseball, could I hit over one fifty and have one homer? So let's start with baseball. One fifty so, and one homer. So obviously, you said you were a college. Baseball Cannot be player. benched. Yeah. So you obviously have some skill in baseball. Only problem is you're you're old, or uh, <laughs> and obviously you said you've had your fair share of injuries, which is it's true. Uh, which and, is and definitely considered all the sports. And we now know my glucose. We know my glucose. So I'm just let's assume you're a DH in baseball because I don't assume you. I don't know if you would play any positions at this point. I feel like get out there and still turn a double play though. I feel like I'd actually be a defensive specialist. the ball specialist. being hit 100 miles per hour at you? That's my, I mean my jam. I was a good, I was a great, uh, defense was my, well, we'll, we'll see. It's questionable when the last time you picked up a glove is. But, <laughs> with that being said, I think, since you obviously already have that underlying skill, yeah. and you're going to be training with the best trainer, with that being said, you're not hitting 150. I'm not hitting 150. You don't think I hit 150? I don't, I don't uh, I'm trying to think. What did you hit in college? What was your average? Uh, about? I was, I was over 300 hitter. Okay. So you're training for a full year, doing nothing but training. Nothing. With the best trainer. Living, sleeping, whoever the best trainer is. This sport mm-hmm. for a year. And you're, I'd say. And don't forget, I got to hit one homer. Mm-hmm. There's a chance you can hit 150. The homer's tough. Did you hit? How many homers did you hit in college? Wasn't a big home run guy. So was it more? Every than now 10? and then I'd catch one. But I can't remember how many. See, but... the one thing is, you have some bat speed, right? I do. The ball's coming pretty hard. You don't need to absolutely smoke it to get out, especially at this point. Uh, so I think you're playing every game. Every cannot you're getting be benched. Five at bats a game. Yeah. I think at one point you're just gonna uh, turn on one uh, inside pitch. You're gonna hit it just over the left. So you're kind of giving me like the blind squirrel egg. Mm-hmm. Find, you know, finds the egg. So I think the there's. Uh, I'll give a percentage. Okay. I'd say there's probably a 40 percent chance you could do it in baseball. Okay. Let's go to basketball. A hundred, how many points? Uh, 50 points. 50 points. And a hundred assists. So that's 50 points in 82 games. I think if you train that much, the thing is, you said you tore your ACL, obviously. Yeah. Uh, did you have a shoulder thing at one point? I did. So sure. that does, that impacts not basketball, really. Because yeah. you're not going to be dropping back right. and throwing. Uh, I'm thinking 50 points. I don't even think the trainer could help you with this. Because you're not get, you're not going to be able to like touch the rim or dunk. No. At any point, there'll be no. And dunk. you're really not gonna be able to get by anyone. Nobody. Like who would you get by? I think Isaiah Thomas. Would like, Isaiah Thomas is taller than. What happens when he taught me some handles? Also, you you're gonna be the shortest person out. There. You're not getting by them. You, by how much? How you, much? You, you get by them by this much. They're swatting you. I think the shortest person they me is probably like five ten. What if I gave him like uh, a quick fake? Like a, like a. They can bite on the fake. They'd still block you. But the thing I'm thinking. What if I switch is the other I'm hand? thinking eighty two games. You have to average. Less than a point a game. Okay. 
I think on the fast break and kind of just chilling like near the rim and then they come to double you step up you lay it up or what if every time I got the ball I just shot from like three point range I think you could get 50 points a hundred assists is questionable because I'm, I don't I'm not confident you could make a pass without getting uh, take, <laughs> but I was a point take, guard take the other team. <laughs> I mean at this point I mean you got to put some zip on it uh how many assists 100 100 assists I mean, that's so, even dumb luck that I just literally pass it to the guy who then scores. That's an assist. But I'm saying, if you pass it, what's stopping the defense from just running and catching that little lob? Because <laughs> I can, I can bounce pass it. Okay, I'm, I'm questionable. That's, in that. I'll give that a 45 percent chance that you could do that. And we said baseball was a 40 percent. So actually, mm-hmm. you feel basketball might be my best option. Yeah, because you picked bad stats. Like you're very low. If you put up, if you play every minute of every game, put up 50 points and 100 assists, you would get cut. <laughs> True. Okay. Okay. Football, zero. I two percent. Really? I don't. So you hurt your shoulder. Yeah. So can you? Could you confidently throw a football more than five? Well, it was right my now? left shoulder. Oh, you're okay. Yeah, I, I went out for my birthday that. this year and I uh, went to the football field and I threw the ball forty yards down the field. Did you actually? I got on video. Let's yeah, see the that video. Was, that was my birthday challenge. We'll, we'll, we'll watch the video after. All right. All right. Uh, so then that percentage is going up. I'm trying to think because. I don't really have any confidence in you throwing it more than five yards down the field. I completely uh, fast. That gives me but, the same odds, too. But what I'm thinking, let's put you... <laughs> so you're telling me if I had Tyreek Hill and No, Wild that's what I'm saying. And just bubble uh, screens all day long. So my thing is, I think there's two plays that you could eat on. It. You just throw a screen. Right. McCaffrey, Tyreek, eventually. And you have to throw for, what, 1,000 yards? 1,000 yards is a decent amount. 1,000 yards if we're talking, what, how many, 17 weeks or 17 games now? It's, it's 17 games. So, so 17 games. So I have to throw for less than 100 yards a game. And I get You have over. to throw for 58 yards a game. Oh, come on. I could do that now without any training, I feel like. I feel like if okay, so I was the how Vito many did you say? last week and one more quarterback went down in for the Giants no, and they I will were like, we you, need though, somebody to come in, is I could have thrown for 50 yards. I should have said this for basketball, too. Baseball, you have a chance. In football and basketball, you're not finishing the season. You're not going to be able to play all of the games. Especially in football. You're playing quarterback. You need to take zero hits to play all the games. So you have to throw a screen and hope that no one just runs So through. Max Crosby, you say, well, You're end one life. roughing the passer away from being in a hospital. So <laughs> I don't I don't see. So what was it? It was uh, 1,000 yards. Was that it? 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. 10 touchdowns. I feel mm, 10 touchdowns is tough. Come is on, it, fades? Fades in the end zone? I, could you throw a fade? I could throw a fade. What, what system or whose team are you on? I think I gotta go Mike McDaniel's. I gotta go with somebody that knows how to utilize. So it. you're in the Dolphins. You have Tyreek and Waddle. Or I feel like I could play in. Just put your. I could play in Kansas City's offense. Do you want to play in Kansas City's offense though? Because then you have like Kelsey and Pacheco's not helping you. Well, though. Kelsey would be good for me because he's a big target. Yeah, but would you throw screens to Kelsey? Yeah, he likes to run that little like shovel screen. Uh, so whatever team you are, I think if, I'll give you a twenty-five percent chance because I that's generous because I think those stats are questionable and there's no way you play seventeen games. Really? When you look at these athletes, six six five, super athletic, pr- one of the top one percent in the world. Yes, and me. O- they're always hurt, and you. They are. Who are who's forty five seven? But I am. I am. No, but, but, I am like a rock of manliness. Nick, Nick like, Bosa. Nick Bosa comes off the edge. You throw the screen. Nick Bosa says, "I don't care. This guy is super small. I don't know why he's in the league. He just takes you down." Are you getting up and playing the rest of the season? Well, why would Nick Bosa be so mean? <laughs> like, what? I, I think you're going to run into one mean NFL player. That's a good point. But I have a likable face. So, I actually, think, I'm so. moving it down to 15%. I don't think... How did I lose them? <laughs> I, I, I just think... 58 yards So, game. you said the only thing that can stop you is death. So, if you're... <laughs> right. If, 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 you're, if you're injured, are you playing? I, 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 listen, I'm not going to let my team down. Okay. So, you're playing injured. So, I'm trying to think. The only thing that could injure you could, that would really stop you from throwing those screens is, like, anything here. Right. Or maybe the back. <laughs> and so, I could be, like, Steve Grogan with the neck roll. You're yeah, a New England okay. Patriot guy. So, I can, I can literally be out there almost like I'll, the Michelin I'll, Man I'll put bubble it back wrapped up. 25%. Because you're having these elite trainers teaching you. Right. That's what I'm and, saying. And the only two positions you could play as a 40-year-old or quarterback or kicker. Right. So, no, I can't kick. No, I, I wasn't going to say that. I'm self-aware. Uh, I didn't throw hockey in there. I actually played hockey in college, too. I was a goalie. <laughs> I feel like I could probably, in the course of an NHL but you're season... You're just not that big. You don't need to be that big in hockey. But, you, but it helps. Uh, how, how many saves do you think? Well, I'm saying I feel like I could probably get, like, in the course of a full NHL season with no benchings, I could probably get 10 shutouts. 
Ten shutouts. I can't, dude. I have lightning fast reflex. Look at that. Ten, ten shutouts that in right the there? National Hockey League. Yeah. Ten games. How many games does it play? Eighty-two. A lot, but I could. Do ten. That. Ten games where they don't. The other team doesn't score. Ten games. I could do it. I don't think. I think you do it for at most one. One would be lucky. I feel like I could play the whole season and have a below three goals against average. With ten shutouts. Uh, one percent, one percent. That one's a one percent. Are you crazy? That I, was you, my best one. I feel like I could do that now without even a full year of training. Ten shutouts. Ten shutouts. Ten shutouts. Ten shutouts. Take it to the bank. Uh, okay, we gotta wrap it up there. Ten, ten shutouts. Wow. Well, I mean, and again, we should. I should mention before we do wrap it up that this started with you saying that if you got forty possessions, oh, yeah, okay, against Webinyama, what Webinyama? Yes, <laughs> that you could score. I think I'm scoring once, and which is much more you realistic than you. No, because the thing I'm saying is, I'm not saying, I'm not getting by Victor. Okay. I can't, I probably would miss the light, too. So, wait, let me say this. So, my, my thing is, your same thing you said in the NBA. I, do you think every single, if I just go way back and just pull it, or just really quickly pull it, you think he's blocking everyone? If Webb and Yama I think it, is I'll told that every time you score... He loses a million dollars, so he is gonna d you up like it is the no, last this, shot of the if, NBA finals. If I get finals. fouled, I get free throws. If I get fouled, I get free throws. He's how is that man gonna foul you? You're almost too small to him to foul. That's fair enough. But <laughs> I, I'm I'm thinking if I get twenty clean twenty, I'm just taking really deep three. You are not. How are you getting? If I get he's twenty off without getting blocked, the ball. if I like, get twenty off, check, are we doing check ball like check ball? Yeah. If I get twenty off, one of them is going. How are you even getting it off? Like, literally, he could be behind me, and his arm would be in your face. Or the referees. Yeah. Okay. So I was going you, you think you're going to take him in street ball? I, I, I was going to push yeah. off. <laughs> you ain't pushing off him. He could literally like do one of these the things to you, and you'd be like like the cartoon so, where you're yeah, trying to I, run I in place, think, and he's I just think, holding your head. I think me scoring once against Weminyama right now is more realistic than you doing any of those things. I feel I could run the table on all those challenges. No, 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 no. Yes, I could have the oh, parlay. You, you gotta think. I understand Victor says he's gonna lose a million dollars, but he's the, he's getting paid so much money. You think all 40 possessions to be totally locked in? I think that man... Also, do you think he's gonna see me at 5'10", 150, 60 pounds... Obviously not a basketball player, but you're and he's so, gonna and he's gonna be like I I, I really want to stop this kid. What if I told right. him Victor for every shot I make I make five million? No, don't what? you think you'd feel bad for me and let me make one shot? <laughs> no, because what I'm saying is the 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 challenge is you were that that you were going against forty attempts of Webinyama's best, and you're saying give me forty That's, runs, well, forty runs at the man. But players don't give you their best every possession. Like, he's going to have a bad possession where he doesn't lock and I get the shot off. It's cash. What shot? I'm, what's, I'm, tell me your go-to shot. What, what shot are you going to use? So, so I'm going. I'm, what do you have so in the bag? I'm, I probably won't pump fix. That's not going to do anything. I am just dribbling. <laughs> out, I'm dribbling jump. backwards <laughs> or around. I'm going to half court and I'm pulling it. Probably. Or, or I'm going to the right before half court, the right side. I'm pulling it. And I'm banking it. So, what you're telling me is... That even if I remove Webb and Yama from the equation, that if I gave you 40 shots from an NBA half court, you're putting one in. Yeah. No. We will do that. Wait, that an, will be a... an NBA half court? I was talking about, like, the, the Y. Regardless. Yeah, from half court, right. I'm easily putting one in. One of our next, we'll me, get our me, producer. Give me, give me 10 shots and putting one okay, in. Okay, we'll, maybe we'll have to do this as a challenge. We'll go out to the football field where I'll show you I can still air okay. it out, and then we're going to a basketball court, and I'm going to put... We're going to take 40 shots from half court, and we're going to see what I, happens. I think I shoot better from half court than normal three-point range. range. <laughs> why, why is that, man? <laughs> it's, it's just, it's a bucket. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, I feel like we covered it all today. Um, and I am very curious what y'all out there think of Zach and I. Now, how about this? Here's one. Since we were opposed, you and I combine forces. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we play Webb and Yama and LeBron, 2v2. Okay. And we, can we score? They can only guard us when we get into the paint. Yeah, we can score. Can we, can we keep it, can we keep it within 10 points? Mm, 10 points is tough. Because the thing, I, thing I'm saying is, they get the ball back, the game's over. I don't think... Either of us could ever stop them. 
they'd have to miss a jump shot, which why would they take a jump shot when both of us are 5, 10, or lower? Uh, so, where are we playing? To 21? How about this? They can't, they can't go in the paint. They're taking jump shots, and we... So, essentially, it's a guarded jump shot versus a non-guard jump shot for us. Can we keep it within 10? So, that's saying, let's say it's a 21. Could we score 11 points? Yeah. I don't think so. We can't score, score 11 I mean, that's a lot of pressure. I think we could. I you think, think we, I think think we, we could move it. I think we can move the ball around. We don't need to move the ball. Just whoever gets the ball <laughs> shoots it. They can't guard us. Well, they can guard us. They just can't guard us in the paint. And neither one of us is driving the paint. No, I thought you said they can only guard us in the paint. Oh, yeah, they can only guard us in the paint. My yeah. bad. Yeah, we yes, can yes. just... I, I don't know if we're that... Are we that coming with our jump shots? I feel like I, I feel like my jumper's still there. Okay. Uh, we have a chance. We have a chance. It's more likely than you getting 10 shutouts. Right. So we think that if we went against them... That we could keep it 21-11. It wouldn't be embarrassing unless you knew that they can't guard us outside the three-point line and we they can only shoot jumpers. Gotcha. But then the thing is, like, it doesn't matter that we're even there. Because, like, us contesting, we're never going to matter for their jump shots. So it's really just a wide-open jump shot shoot-off, pretty much. With LeBron. Well, I mean, they can get close enough. Right? I mean, in the paint. I mean, unless we're just chucking up threes. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be a jump shot. They're not taking a layup from outside the paint. Mm. Well, I, both of them can jump from outside the paint and dunk it. So that, <laughs> that could be a, a flaw in the plan. Good point. <laughs> well, again, my friend, this was a very fun episode. Uh, let us know what you think out there. Let us know uh, what your least favorite statistic is. Let us know um, if you think Zach or I have any chance of accomplishing our professional sports uh, feats that we've left out. And also, last question for you, in case we don't get another episode in, man, what's your favorite Thanksgiving food? The bread. The rolls. The bread. Or, or mashed potatoes. Or mashed potatoes. You might as well not just, not corn. You might as well just slap me. I mean, not sweet potatoes, not candy yams. No, mashed potatoes are not better stuffing. Than no, I don't like stuffing. <laughs> Who are you? What? <laughs> well, I, it uh, depends what type of stuffing. But mashed potatoes. Well, are how, rolls. what type of stuffing? What kind? Of, what, what, how many stuffing options are there? there? There's a good amount of options. Like it depends what what's in the stuffing. Uh, cornbread, man. Mm. All right. So yeah, anything but corn because it's not a Thanksgiving. Corn. Is... Listen. You're saying I'm not corn on the cob. You told me you've insulted. Corn you've insulted. On you've the cob. My, you've attacked my age. You've attacked my physical uh, abilities. You've attacked my 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 dreams of playing in the major sports. But I think the most offensive thing you have just said is that corn is not a Thanksgiving food. Corn is the thing we were talking about this off. Corn, corn on the cob. Yeah. You don't don't have a corn on the cob on your Thanksgiving. You have plate. like the mini one, the mini cob. Like the half cob. It's not a Thanksgiving food. It is a Thanksgiving food. They had it like stacked up. The pilgrims carried a plate of it out. Or Were to you the, there? The Indians. I wasn't, but I saw the pictures in the history books. Those aren't those aren't pictures from the actual thing. <laughs> I understand. They're Nobody's illustrations. Oh, exactly. Illustrations of, you know, what, what you saw. I'm I mean, pretty sure they're secondary. There's sources. a picture of an illustration of George Washington. Do you think that that wasn't, like, accurate? Like, that actually he was, like, you know, rocking different outfits? Than, I don't like, think he was on, on statistically at that exact moment standing on the boat going like this as they crossed. The Delaware? Yeah. By the way, I went down to Lampert's Mill... Um, Lampert's I think we gotta wrap this up. True. This past weekend, what is the big deal about getting across the Delaware? I feel like I could swim the Delaware. Like, what was the big? How, how long is? It? I never. Been there. How big is it? I don't know. It didn't look that big. I feel like I say this for a lot of things. Like, if my life depended on it, I could swim across that. But no, not actually. It? Actually, I take that back. It's like the current. Like you just get pulled like in the total opposite direction. Like you just wouldn't be able to control yourself. So no, you but wouldn't. The big be able to feat across. was him getting across the Delaware. It was or in the a fact boat. that he did it. Well, I mean, no, it was it was a, it was a tactic of war. Uh, <laughs> it was well, he snuck up on them by going across the Delaware. And that was the move, not yeah. getting across the no, Delaware. No, it wasn't impressive that he actually crossed it. It was that he. It was on New Year's Eve, right? Am I mistaken? He snuck. Listen, it might be uh, Christmas Eve. Google that. All right, you start doing the the uh, outro. Outro. Yeah, yeah, we'll probably. Who knows if this will even make it? We might cut this. But, I mean, you know, what I'm saying is, I understand, but it's not like you're going to see it. And he was, he's in, like, you he know, Gucci sunglasses. He crossed on Christmas Day, 1776. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Probably have a nice, nice Christmas feast. Mm-hmm. But then he went right to battle, or? Chose to cross the, uh, the river at this strategic point because it allowed his troops to cross without 
probable detection. Nice. After landing in New Jersey, Stealth. they marched approximately nine miles through a winter storm and gained the Hessian garrison at the Battle of Trenton. Hessians? Oh, that's Germans, aren't they? I think that's Germans. It says Hessian. Is Hessian from Germany? I think they were like mercenaries. Yeah, I was a yeah, pretty sure. I'm gonna drop watch watch this. Check out the big brain on me right now. The Hessians are German troops hired to help fight during the revolution. Oh, that's impressive. That's right. You why, know, because you know who fight? else is a Hessian? Why were, why were the Germans? The headless German... horseman is a Hessian. That's, that's true. Why, why are the Germans a part of the American Revolution? We never learned this. Uh, because uh, I think that they were trying to get in on the, you know, like, hey, oh, they help wanted, us. They wanted some of the colonies? Right. Okay. You know. Well, yeah. And that's why France then jumped in for us. They were like, hey, mm-hmm. man, let me, you know, yeah. chance to take down our rivals. For sure. For What's sure. up? Okay. Oh, here we got to wrap this up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a phenomenal Thanksgiving. Eat a lot of corn and bread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Until then, see you next time.